Hello and welcome to a new video of Solo Computer Science. So today I want to show you an improvement of a previous video I made of uh, the Computer Recreations playlist. It was the video called Probability Based Random Text Generation. And I want to start immediately with uh, an example of uh, generated text this time because uh, the improvement is quite uh, important. So let's see this file. So uh, each line of a file is um, generated text. In this case, uh, each uh, line uh, is uh, 1024 characters long. This one, for example, is a, a line generated with order one. So it's an empty seed. And I tried with 10 iterations for each uh, order. So this one, as you can see, is just a plain random string. There is no structure. And uh, yeah, so we can see after 10, yeah, so we are at order 2 now, there's a little bit more structure. And we can go on to order 3, then order 4, see now you can see some um, recognizable words, see now there's a little bit of structure. And we can go on. And as we go on with the orders, the text uh, gets uh, less random every time. So we can go on to order number seven. See, for example, if we do something like this, if we copy the um, the string, for example, up to here, it's a GPT. Okay. Then we ask the artificial intelligence if it recognizes this text. So uh, where? does this text come from okay see the text does not seem to come from any specific source it appears to be a random combination of phrases and words without a clear context or meaning and this is the text so here yeah so if we go back to the generated uh, uh, strings we go on with the orders. So if you remember in the in the other video, I, I couldn't go up to order nine because of the way the frequency were uh, saved. They were uh, matrices. And uh, now I'll show you what's changed. Anyway, if we go on with the orders, so uh, order. See in this example, I arrived up to order 40. So let's see this one, okay. Let's see what the what chat GPT tells us. Okay, see now this one it recognizes that it's up from the play Henry the Eighth of William Shakespeare. Now we're just at order sixteen, but as I told you, I went up to order forty. Anyway, now I'll show you the steps to do this and what changed from the other video. Okay, so here's a summary of all the steps. So the first thing to do is to select an alphabet, so the characters you'll see in the output. And so uh, if we see the alphabet I selected for the script, so we have all the lowercase letters, the numbers from uh, zero to nine, uh, the new line character, some uh, special characters here, and uh, yeah, the space character, very important, and some other characters as well. And uh, okay, so once you select the alphabet, so this is a global variable, as you can see here, a list of strings, we need to retrieve the remote text. And so we do this with the URL lib, uh, URL lib.request.url open. URLs is uh, a list of URLs saved in a text file. And so if you go back to our example uh, I showed you before, I um, used these two text files. These are the complete uh, works of William Shakespeare. It's a single text file. See, it's a very long text file. Uh, then we have this other uh, text file called the Lives of the Twelve Caesars. So um, the script can put um, together uh, several uh, URLs and then combine them in a single uh, input uh, simply by concatenating one file to the other. And so we reach the step number three, which is the text normalization, which means uh, that we need to remove uh, uh, duplicate white spaces and uh, characters which are not part of the alphabet. So everything is simplified. I did it like this. And then, uh, okay, as you can see here, final text dot append only for um, characters in the alphabet. So you can simply do it like this. And then you save everything in uh, final text and return a string. This function returns the normalized text. 
And now we get to the step number four, which is the most interesting uh, part, which changed a lot from the other video. And um, it consists on uh, counting the frequencies of group of letters, uh, which is called um, order. And it's the one that went from one to 14 in the generated example. But instead of using a, a matrix, we'll use a, a dict. And now I'll show you uh, what it means. Uh, then we have the step number five, uh, which uh, I'll show you generate, generated. Okay, so the, um, it's the selection of the seed word, the one that starts uh, the randomly generated text. So in case of order one, the seed is empty, but uh, from order two forwards, see there's a single letter in order two, and in order three, there are two letters. See, for example, here is PO, etc., etc. In order um, four, there are four letters. And then if we go to order 40, there are 39 letters here. And uh, the, these uh, seeds are selected from the normalized text randomly. So uh, an offset um, is selected from the normalized text and then uh, you just extract the number of uh, characters you need. After step number five, there is step number six, which consists in generating the new text. Uh, this um, didn't change much from the previous video. I adapted it for using the dicts and not the uh, matrix. And finally, there's just um, writing on the file. But now we'll see point four, because as it's written here, it's a huge improvement memory-wise. And so, yeah, I talked to you about the alphabet. Then we have, the, as you, as I told you, the URL lib dot request. Then uh, uh, to normalize the text, uh, I use a uh, beautiful soup, which is a Python library to filter uh, HTML. With this uh, two commands, you get the contents of a web page as a string without the HTML tags. With this one, uh, get text. You uh, unite the ver the different uh, section of a web page with a white space character in this case. So you just get a plain text, no HTML tags. And that is very convenient for the text generation. And okay, so now I'll show you the text classification, which is a step number four. Okay, so for example, if we have this, uh, this text here, which is part of the complete works of Shakespeare, just this one. So if we use uh, order four with our script, uh, we get this, um, classification. So uh, every key of the dict is a string, uh, which is a substring of the original text. And um, the value is the appearing frequency, the currency frequency. And uh, as you see, mon, see it's shifted by one character each iteration. So mon, then there is no m anymore, but there's on space w, then n space wh, etc. So if you start from here, one, the dot is not um, part of the alphabet, so it's not here in the dict. Who set this ancient? Yeah, see. So here we have the various frequencies. Then we get to order number six. See, this is, it works in the same way, just that the, the key has a length of six and not of four anymore. But the frequency now ten more to one. And uh, I had to cut the output anyway here, as you can see, I put three dots because the output, uh, otherwise it wouldn't fit in a single page. Uh, then I extracted the dict of order 20 and yeah, it's uh, all practically all frequencies are, are one. And so uh, the bigger the order and um, the more the, these frequencies tend to one. Remaining on the order 20 example, so if you use the old method of a previous video, which you can see, we with an order 20, we had to use a 20 dimension int matrix. The length for each side was the length of the alphabet. If we use the lowercase uh, um, letters, the 10 di digits and the space, uh, we have 38 characters. And uh, since we have 20 dimensions, it means 38 to the power of 20 slots, which is this huge number here, which is about four times 10 to the power of 31 bytes. If we assume that an int occupies one byte, and this is a really big number, you can see it on Wikipedia, Jop byte, yeah, we can ask it here, what is a Jop byte? See what's written here. I've not reached, yes, reached capacity to support Jop byte scale storage. Anyway, this is a very big number, and uh, with this um, kind of order, big order, 
20 uh, and more we get a sparse matrix in fact as i said before the bigger the order but the more sparse the matrix is however if we use dix we get a much more efficient use of uh, memory because we don't have to save uh, the zeros any zeros we just save uh, the frequency of existing uh, uh, substrings not the ones that don't exist and uh, in this uh, specific example so in this text here i counted so i printed on screen and i got 497 elements the dicta so the dict has 497 elements the keys are strings and values are in as i said before each key has 20 characters because we are over 20 so we are in this case here and uh, if we assume uh, that one character occupies one byte uh, we get this computation here so for the integers we get 497 integers and then we get 497 times 20 characters uh, then we get an unknown uh, quantity which is the um, overhead of the dict anyway we get about uh, 10 kilobytes of uh, memory used which is uh, about 10 to the power of 27 times smaller uh, than using the frequency matrix as i did in the other video so this is uh, something hugely smaller at least for this uh, short text. Of course, if we have a longer text, uh, this one gets less relevant. So the difference here, uh, once we cl classify the text, uh, we need to make some changes in the text generation phase. To emulate the matrix zeros, uh, we can check if the current string is in the frequency dict. So we do it like this. If current letters plus alphabet of random letter in the dict, and so this is the check we need to do then this part afterwards the n minus frequency is uh, practically the same as before um, this is um, a random weight uh, probability and this is also described in the original uh, scientific american article and then uh, once we get the letter index we can uh, get the character like this so alphabet of letter index and add it in the generated text we start uh, with the seed Okay, in the, to the generate function, we need to pass the frequency dict and the, the seed and the length to generate. In the generated uh, text here, it was uh, 1024 characters, but you can put any number. So we start with the seed, we copy the seed to a temporary variable here. Uh, then we count uh, the total frequencies of the current letters plus uh, all the letters if they exist. So it becomes a single string. So if we are on order 20, Current letters has 19 characters for order 20. And then we do the sum of the frequencies. And then, yeah, these are the most important changes. Uh, as you can see, n is a random number between 0 and total frequency. Once we have uh, the new letter, the value here, which is put in the generated text, once we have that, we need to shift the current string like this. So we just um, go to the next character. And then we add to the existing string the next uh, letter in the alphabet and do the check uh, if it's in the um, dict or not and so on. Yeah, this is the main uh, function here. The um, frequency is computed for every order. You no, don't need to compute it for every iteration, just for every order. Then the seed is selected for every iteration. Uh, new seed is um, randomly selected from the original string. Of course, the seed has a length of order minus one. And then uh, you just generate the text like this. So you pass the frequency index to the seed and the length you want uh, in the resulting text. And write everything in the text file, generated.txt. I want to show you what happens if we change the, the content. So text URLs. Okay, we delete the, these ones for a moment. Then we copy the GNU GPL license uh, text URL here like this. Then this one, the Apache license text. Okay. Then we do make run. Okay, just wait for a moment. Yeah, it gets slower, um, a little slower as long uh, when the order gets bigger. So now it's finished. Now let's see generated dot text see this um this first line this is a single line now this first line is the normalized text but we just skip this and then we get to the interesting part so this is a um, text for order one we have the 10 iterations then we get to order uh, number two 
she is still nothing really useful let's see the order for it is interesting you can read something interesting yeah and uh just like before i went up to order 40 because uh, you can do it yeah but yeah it gets less random as you go on and uh, an interesting thing you can do is to get the output so with the generated.txt file we just uh, we just got and feed it back to the script again uh, you just need to remove the iteration equals all the that stuff useless stuff like this on normalized text this is what i got before uh, when i ran this um, twice in the script so this is the normalized text uh, it's still the long string okay okay so now we get to the interesting part see that now there's it's a bit more more random than um, the one we just saw before there's some uh, strange things happening here even for bigger orders yeah so you can do experiments yeah i think that it's all for today i'll leave the script uh, and all the stuff you need in the video description there's a link uh, to um, the source code and yeah so if you like this video uh, remember to put a thumbs up and uh, to subscribe and as always bye bye